Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan, and welcome to my first Chelsea game review, match review of the season. Yes, indeed, Frank Lampard's first game in charge of the Blues, and Chelsea went off to Ireland to play the Bohemians, aside from Dublin, apparently. This essentially was an opportunity for Frank Lampard to take a look at the fringe players, the youth players, and try a few things out. But before I do get into today's video, if you enjoy my content and have been watching the videos, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notifications icon to make sure you get updates when I upload videos. Right then, so this was the absolute quintessential first pre-season game in the sense of it was just the chance for Frank Lampard to try out a load and I mean a load of different players and a few different formations well in this instance really a couple of formations Lampard actually used 22 different players in this match each 45 minutes was a completely different starting 11 both of which were completely different formations. So <laughs> the result really didn't matter in this game. It was a chance of just trying a load of stuff out with a bunch of players that probably won't get near the first team next season. One of the more experienced Chelsea players in Michy Batshuayi took the lead for Chelsea in the eighth minute, only for Chelsea to concede the equaliser in the 89th minute by a Dublin player called Malloy, or a Bohemians player called Malloy. Don't know if he's Irish. Sounds Irish. I'm going to talk about who played formations and player performances in just a moment, but I want to take this opportunity to remind Chelsea fans not to be reactionary at this one all draw at maybe, I don't want to say a pub side, but certainly a much more inferior side in terms of quality. The reason why Chelsea has these preseason games is not necessarily to just go out and win, it's to try things out and just look at players on the pitch maybe in new positions and new formations. It's assessing movement and application. The game itself doesn't actually matter. Lampard's just trying new things and wants to see effort from, like I said, fringe players and youngsters. I mean, in the second half, that starting 11 of those players, they could essentially be seen as Chelsea's maybe D team that have never even played with each other before and might not be used to that formation. So context is required yeah. But it was exciting, Frank Lampard was all smiles as he walked over to the bench shaking hands but as soon as he sat down on the coach's bench he went all serious and analytical flanked by his assistant coaches Jody Morris and Joe Edwards. It was a nice thing to see. So how did the game go? Well on that let's take a look at some formations. The first half of the game was the strongest of the two and in that half Frank Lampard deployed a 4-2-3-1 formation. In goal, we had senior and experienced goalkeeper Willy Caballero. Looked pretty good, made a couple of good saves. We know he's a good goalkeeper. Nothing really exciting else to report from that. In the centre-back positions, we had Chelsea youngster Gay. I think that's how you pronounce it. And interestingly, his centre-back partner was Cesar Azpilicueta. Now, we've seen Azpilicueta play right centre-back before on a free. But generally he's a fullback and we've never seen him, well certainly I can't remember him playing in a two. But this kind of makes sense because as Belicueta, maybe you could argue he's not tall enough to play that position but he's a very good one-on-one -on -one defender and he's got a lot of experience so putting him next to a youngster makes sense. And also I've said it before in previous videos and podcasts, the modern dynamic fullback basically isn't in the mould of Cesar Azpilicueta and probably not what Frank Lampard is looking for. He might start as a fullback in the future for Frank, we'll have to see, but I can understand why he tried him out at centre-back. In the right-back position, we had Chelsea youngster Dujon Sterling and in the left-back position, we had Kennedy, which is interesting because we've got to know Kennedy as a winger and maybe been pushed back to a left wing-back under Antonio Conte, but he was playing straight up left back in this game. I'm not sure that's too suitable for him, I'm, I question his defensive qualities, but obviously that would make a very attacking option. The two midfielders down in the engine room were Danny Drinkwater and Ethan Ampadu. Up in the 10 position was Chelsea Academy Player of the Year, Conor Gallagher. Gallagher was flanked by Pedro on his right and Casey Palmer on the left, so they were the wings. And as you already know, up front was more experienced striker, Michy Batshuayi. So in the first half, Chelsea started pretty well and were knocking the ball around quite well. 
They looked quite comfortable in the formation and like I said, the ball was moving fast. For the opening, say, 30 minutes, I was really, really impressed by the number 10, Connor Gallagher. You can tell why he's so highly rated. He moves the ball very quickly, generally makes the right decisions and was really applying himself in the earlier stages of that first half. I guess maybe a standout player for a sort of period of that first half, but it did look like maybe he drifted out the game towards the end of that half. I don't know if it's a fitness thing or perhaps he was burnt out because he was trying too hard in the opening stages, but he certainly looked very good, Conor Gallagher. Another positive performance for me was from Michy Bashroi up front as striker. I mean, we know he's a good striker, certainly a high level striker, scored a good goal. And another really good moment he had that for me was a highlight for him was when Ampadu played a beautiful long ball up to him and Batshuayi picked it up, brought it forward, but he had no support to lay it off to or set up a goal. So he was keeping possession and he held up like two or three opposition defenders, did really good play, got a bit frustrated how there was no support, but kept possession and passed it back. Some really good centre forward play from Michi Batshuayi throughout the first 45 minutes. Apart from getting the goal, he did some generally good play. And speaking of Ethan Ampadu, for me personally, he was my man of the match. Again, he only played the first 45 minutes, but he looked so accomplished in that deep midfield role. Really, really good on the ball. He was crunching into tackles, not recklessly. He's like just aggressive in the tackle. Very, very impressive with long passes and short passes, but the way he moves, you can kind of tell he's been coached by Sari in the first team. He picks up the ball, he backs off, he knows where his fellow teammates are, and he makes the right pass. He looks very, very functional, good defensively, good in the tackle, and superb at passing. So I was so impressed by Ethan Ampadu in that 45 minutes. So generally, the first half was serviceable. I was very impressed by Ampadu, I was pretty impressed by Michi Batshuayi and Conor Gallagher. The rest of the players, you know, weren't amazing for me and perhaps they should have scored more goals in that first half, but you put it down to, you know, unfamiliarity and essentially pre-season. A few words on some other players in that first half. Dujon Sterling didn't really impress me. I was kind of disappointed with him. He didn't do too much of note in that game, which, like I said, I was a bit disappointed by. And Danny Drinkwater is an interesting one. Obviously, he hasn't played football in so long. And the poor geezer, you could tell he was absolutely desperate to impress Frank Lampard. He was running all over the gaff, doing a couple of good things, but making mistakes, maybe from trying too hard. Um, I'm not sure Danny's going to make it, but... He is an okay, decent footballer. Obviously, he's won the Premier League, but whether Frank will have him in consideration, considering we have so many midfielders at Chelsea, I'm not sure, and he didn't light up the pitch in this first half. Pedro didn't have a good game, but we don't have to assess him because we know he can be good. Casey Palmer was a bit disappointing for me, apart from two excellent passes he did, and I mean excellent passes. He received the ball and did long, flat diagonals to the striker, great, but other than that, he was a passenger in the game and just didn't get involved enough, so Casey Palmer was a bit disappointing for me. And I guess the rest of the players were serviceable at best, but that's alright because again, context is required. It's the first half of a preseason game, the first preseason game, first time they're playing with each other, etc. So if you watch the game, what do you think about my thoughts so far? Get down in the comments, let me know your opinions if you agree or disagree, or want to highlight something I've missed. Anyway, the second half came and with that brought a whole new 11 and a whole new formation. And sadly, with that, it brought a rather shoddy performance. I mean, a couple of bright moments and performers maybe, but generally, poor. Frank lined up with a kind of 4-1-4-1 formation, or you might view it as a 4 Five, one, or maybe a 4-3-3 in possession. Quick plug on my previous video, if you haven't seen it, I did a video on Frank Lampard's midfield options. And what I said in that previous video was actually evident in this game. And a couple of the formations I spoke about in that video were used essentially in this game. The 4-2-3-1 and really the 4-3-3 in possession. So go check that out, you might find it interesting. Anyway, let's look at the lineup. Chelsea youngster coming started between the sticks. Kurt Zuma and Trevor Trevor Chalabar with a centre-back pairing, Martin played in the left-back position, and our Italian friend Davide Zabacosta played at right-back. 
Lewis Baker played in deep midfield dictating play and the two midfielders in front of him were Tamuri Bakayoko and youngster Billy Gilmore. The front three consisted of striker Ugbo up front flanked on the right by Lucas Piazon and the left Izzy Brown. Generally on the whole this 11 and maybe even formation to this 11 seemed quite dysfunctional and uninspiring. There was a lot of running, a few good moments, but generally they couldn't force the issue. Attention maybe dropped towards the end of the half and they conceded the equaliser to Bohemians. A really good team goal executed by uh, player Malloy and it was a really, really good goal to be fair and great celebration from Malloy, some acrobatic flip or whatever. I mean, it was a great goal to watch, but frustrating obviously. So who performed well in this dismal half? Well there is a shining light and for me that was Billy Gilmore. Gilmore was very very good in that advanced midfield role. Superb on the ball, very good at releasing the ball quickly and very technical. He completed some dribbles. He, um, he had this really great moment where he took a shot on goal. He was advancing towards the opposition defenders. He lined up to take a shot on his right foot, which sort of anchored the defender, but then just rolled it really quickly and simply to his left and snapped the shot of his left foot and forced the save. It was a lovely little shimmy, that wrong foot of the defender, but sadly, he could not convert the goal. The whole 45 minutes, he was a shining light for me and really the sort of highlight of the second half. Lewis Baker, like I said, was dictating play from deep. He's not that a mobile player, but he's two-footed and he's very, very good at passing, as we know, so a few good long passes with both feet, nothing really astronomically good, a serviceable performance like the rest of them, maybe not as bad as some, but yeah nothing too exciting but you can tell there is a player in Lewis Baker and he might get another look in by Frank Lampard. Zappa Costa was actually one of the better performers in this game but you'd expect him to be because he's a senior player that's played at a high level and he's playing in his natural right back position so he picked up the ball and carried it down the right flank quite comfortably, snapped a couple of shots off and generally had a good enough performance but <laughs> think about the opposition, if he's not relying on combining with these players that he's never played before, you'd expect him to be good against that opposition. So nothing too noteworthy from Zappa Costa. Another midfielder, Bakayoko, looks pretty lost at times, but so did many of them. He did force a save from the keeper from about 20 yards out, down the middle, but he caught it really well. Um, don't want to judge Bakayoko on that game particularly because it was so, such a dysfunctional half but a couple of good moments but yeah didn't stand out to me at all. Disappointments of the half would be Izzy Brown for me on that left wing. I know some people prefer him down the middle but I expected more from him. He lost possession a couple of times and let the ball run out of play. Maybe he was trying too hard. I don't know. For me he was very disappointing and also the worst player for me on the pitch was Lucas Piazon a complete passenger and just made mistakes and when on the ball he wasn't good at all. You know, nothing against the kid, but for me he shouldn't be near Frank Lampard's first team, in my opinion. Okay, that's enough of formations and player chat. So it's interesting. I think people can't get frustrated with the result here. The most important thing is people should praise Frank Lampard for trying out all these players and different formations. It's not really about the result at all to be honest. And in reality, if you're looking at what Frank's doing in terms of assessing these out of fringe players in this game, he should be praised regardless. I mean, Chelsea could have lost 3-0 to that more settled opposition team and he's still trying to do the right thing by giving a combination of youth and fringe players a chance just to see how they fare. So that was the whole point of the exercise and I'm sure Frank got a lot of information from that game. So if the game itself wasn't that exciting, there's certainly a lot of interesting talking points and Frank Lampard's managerial journey has begun and he started assessing different players. It's good that he's looking to be pragmatic and choose different formations and he'll apply different approaches to different opposition and try and suit different players. And that's a big change from Maurizio Sarri. So and also probably a welcome change, to be honest. That's the end of my first match review. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know if you did. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it. Get down in the comments. I will be doing more match reviews on this channel. So if you want me to do that, let me know in the comments and I'll do more. And remember, I'm doing a monthly exclusive video for my Patreon account. If you're a patron, it costs $1 a month. You can help me support my channel by donating a dollar and get the exclusive content. And you can chat to me on there about football. I'll put the link in the description. That's it, guys. Thank you so much 
for tuning into this video. Enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby